So what if you have correlated assets? So correlated assets. What does that mean? That means you have one asset, S1, has a drift and sigma1, S1, dx1. And the second asset has its own drift, uh, its own sigma. So these are, these are both log normal. And one thing to notice is we have x1 and x2, and these are different. So these are different sources of randomness, and you know each one has its own mu and sigma, drift and volatility, and they have different sources of randomness, so they're not perfectly correlated. And so we have the usual the expectation of dx1 is zero, expectation of dx squared is dt, and then we have the expectation of dx1 dx2 it's not just dt it's rho dt and so this is the this is the correlation uh, coefficient here so that tells how how much these two different sources of randomness are correlated okay so now we have correlated assets suppose we have uh, some v is a function of s1 s2 and time and we have a question, what is dv? And the answer is, of course, Ito's lemma. So yet another version of Ito's lemma. How's it work? So we're going to get dv equals partial respect to t dt. And then half sigma 1 squared s1 squared partial second respect to s1 dt plus a half sigma 2 squared s2 squared partial squared respect to s2. So this is all pretty pretty normal so far. Now we're getting some new stuff. And now we're adding sigma 1, sigma 2, rho, s1, s2, second derivative of v with respect to s1, s2, dt. Oh, I missed a dt here. And then there's some usual stuff at the end. Partial respect to s1, ds1 partial respect to s2 ds2 all right i think this is right so here is ito's lemma for two assets and the interesting thing is this middle term here and so there's these halves and then the coefficient here is one why, why did it go to one in, in front here that's because there's actually s1 s2 and s2 s1 and those get folded in uh, into this middle term so that's why it's not a half. And that, that row, the, the, the correlation coefficient, comes in here too. All right, so now we have a formula for dv. That means we can go and do a Black-Scholes derivation. And so what do we want to do? We want to be long the option and short short s1 and s2 so we have two underlines so we have to go two different short factors so if we have some position pi long the option and then short s1 short s2 so we have two different uh, factors delta 1 and delta 2 and now if you take the the derivative you get d pi equals dv minus delta 1 ds1 delta 2 uh, ds2 and we can use the Ito's lemma we just did for the dv and you know do the rest of the Black-Scholes uh, work here and 
we end up with, let's draw an arrow, do some work that I'm not gonna show. And we end up with black shoals for two assets. So partial with respect to T plus a half, sigma one, sigma two, row S1, S2. Second with respect to S1, S, S1, partial S2, plus R, S1, partial of, partial of V with respect to S1, plus R, S2, with respect to S2, minus R, V equals zero. I think that's right, that looks right. So here is Black Shoals for two assets. And I, I didn't do any dividends just to keep it simple. So we got that by doing the standard, you know, long the option, short both underlines, and we end up with Black Shoals here. All right, so that's cool. So what does that mean? That means we can do a payoff for options that is any function, any function of S1 and S2. So what are some examples? So one example is an exchange option. So an example of an exchange option is I have the right to exchange two shares of Apple, AAPL, for one share, Google, G-O-O-G. -O so at expiration, I have the right, but not the obligation to exchange two shares that I own of Apple for one share of Google. And so if Google goes up in price and Apple goes down in price, this option could be valuable at payoff for me. And so what's the, what's the payoff? So it's gonna be a max of something comma zero. And it's gonna be a max of S2 minus two S1 comma zero. So if you decode this, this is paying two, uh, two shares of Apple. So this is S1 and S2. So I'm paying two shares of Apple, getting one share of Google, and it's a max because I, I have the option to do this, I don't have to do this. So another example is a rainbow option. An example of a rainbow option might be, I have the right to buy cheaper of two times Apple or one of Google at price E. So when the option expires, I can either pay or not pay E. And if I choose to exercise the option, I get either two shares of Apple or one share of Google, whichever is cheaper at the time. So if, if they both go up and they both are about the same, then I, I win. If only one of them goes up and the other one goes down, I probably won't win and profit very much. So what's the payoff? So the payoff is gonna be the max of something comma zero because of the optionality here. And then what's it gonna be if I do exercise I'm gonna get the minimum of two Apple, so two S1 or S2. So the, the minimum minus E. So I buy and I get this one, which is the cheaper one, and I pay E, and then I get the max of that or zero. So this is the the optionality is, is the max comma zero part. Then I get the cheaper one and I pay E. 
So that's how the payoff is deciphered. So that's pretty cool. So we've done some examples of exotic options. So we can, we can start thinking about how to price exotic options. That's pretty neat.